If you're looking to develop your CAD skills or maybe you just like free stuff, you should consider entering a design contest. Today, I'm hoping to inspire you with my two-in-one modular toy car entry. I'm a firm believer that a 3D printer is infinitely more useful if you can design your own parts. That's why I have a tutorial series on designing your own parts for 3D printing. Maybe you're enthusiastic to learn, but you don't have anything you really need around the house right now. If that's you, then cast your attention to Printables Design Contests. A while ago, I made a video explaining why I was switching from Thingiverse to Printables. In it, I demonstrated how easy it was to migrate your models from Thingiverse to the new site, and I also discussed the Printables reward system, where you could earn free spools of filament from regular interactions with the site. Another way you can earn free filament and the focus of this video are the Printables contests. I've been wanting to enter one of these for a while, and when I checked earlier this week and found the theme was toy cars, I knew the time was right. Printables has been hosting contests, roughly one every week, for quite some time now, with a new theme for each new competition. This competition, like the others, will earn you Prusa meters enough for a full spool of filament. If we look at a previous competition, we can see that there's multiple winners, increasing your chance of success if you put in the effort. Another way to increase your chances of success is to read the linked judging criteria, which discusses things like how easily the model can be printed, how original it is, and how well you document any assembly. I would argue that while winning prizes is nice, that the design process is inherently rewarding and suitable for expanding your skills. So let's go through mine in creating this car. The first thing I always do is to set up some criteria, starting with the criteria provided by printables. That means my design has to be original, easy to print and easy to assemble. And on top of that, I added my own bonus criteria. I wanted my toy car to be tactile, to have moving parts and of course, wheels that roll. Because even if you have a model of a car that you love, it's much more satisfying when it rolls and also when it has moving parts. I also set myself the aim of having adaptable or modular pieces, basically designing with common components so the toy car could be reconfigured into two different styles. Finally, I wanted simplified and minimal hardware. Just because I've got a wide range of different fasteners doesn't mean someone wanting to build the toy car has to invest in them too. I'm confident I managed to tick all of these boxes, so allow me to showcase you my finished design. Firstly, everything on this toy car can be 3D printed, including all of the body, wheels, flexible tires, and chassis components. And those chassis components can be configured in two different ways. That means that my toy car can be set up as either a sports car or an off-road machine, simply by changing a single bolt on the moving suspension system. I've printed two here, but the one set of parts can achieve either of these two designs. In fact, the only variation of parts you're seeing here is the printed TPU tire design. All of the parts are shared. The lower, smaller panels for the body need to be unique for each configuration, but the main body piece is shared between the two and can slot on top to either create a sports car or alternatively, a sleek off-road racing buggy. Therefore, we end up with a printed toy car that's actually two-in-one because of its buggy and sports car configurations. Let's quickly look at the source CAD, which I've linked in the description because this model is open source. And this main document is a bit of a mess because it has to account for the two configurations. But I have created two assemblies with everything in its correct position, one for the sports car and one for the off-road version. Rather than go through the whole thing, let's have a quick look at how I created some specific features. Features like the wheels and tires were created by revolving 2D profiles then regular extrudes could be used to punch through holes and create detail. Both sets of tires were created in the same way, with a simple profile revolved, and then the tread pattern extruded onto the surface, before a circular pattern was used to transfer the cutout around the whole circumference. The off-road tire fits the same rim, again with a revolved base shape, the chunky tread being extruded up above the surface, and then patterned the whole way around the outside of the tire. For me, the body was by far the hardest thing to model, but it started life as this simple extruded section, which I recreated slightly narrower and lofted between the two. This is then repeated at the back to give it a subtle contour. Once we cut some wheel arches the whole way through and close off the front and rear, it starts to take shape. Even harder than that was the roof, 
which was set up with a series of sketches that I used as guidelines before using on-shape surface tools that simply let me trace around the edge and have the surface in between filled in. The front and back of the roof are simple lofts and then the roof and the body are merged into one piece. To make the body printable, I used an intersecting surface to split it into two from top to bottom and then a second vertical cut to separate it from front to rear. After that, it was just detail work such as adding the mounting holes to bolt everything together. If you're looking to remix, even without an Onshape account, you can click the link, right click on any parts, come up to export and select whatever format you like. If you want to export the whole assembly, right click on that tab, come to export and if you like, you can have a step of the whole assembly already in place. In the case that you wanted to make your own one of these, let's go through printing and assembly. All of the files are split into folders on printables with the quantity and any further instructions added like the parts that need high infill, the parts that need to be printed from TPU and the parts that should be done with a pretty filament. And as the instructions say, all parts are pre-oriented and ready to print without support. The part with the biggest footprint is the base plate, but I sized it to make sure it would still fit on an Ender 3 if rotated 45 degrees as shown. Once you've paid attention to the quantities of parts required, as well as the materials and infill required, it's time to hit print. Due to the amount of parts, there is a fair few hours of printing required, but at least it will give you the chance to capture some nice time lapses. There's only post-processing required for a couple of parts, where we have holes with false floors to avoid the need for support. In these cases, simply drill them out with a 3mm drill bit. And now we're ready to assemble, with everything listed step by step on printables. As a further reference, you can click through to Onshape, articulate the model, hide and show parts and see exactly where things fit. And of course, we're about to go through everything step by step in this video. I managed to design the car to use the same hardware throughout, and that's M3 by 16mm bolts. 46 are needed in total, so a cheap 50 pack like this will be perfect. We start by assembling the front and back suspension, and these are all of the parts that you need. Each suspension arm has a flat side that needs to face down, and you also need to look for the cutout that the head of the bolt will sit in, and make sure they're all facing towards you. And then we simply insert one of our M3 bolts, and as we turn it, it will cut its own thread into the suspension mount piece. When it's the whole way in, the tip will almost be flush on the back of the suspension arm, and you want to do it the whole way up hand tight, before backing it off a couple of turns to make sure the suspension can move freely. We then repeat this another three times for the other suspension arms. And when we get to that stage, we're ready to introduce the hubs. Assembly for these is exactly the same. We insert the bolt, it will cut its own thread. We go the whole way in and then back off a couple of turns. This will allow the suspension to articulate without binding. The TPU springs attach at the top in exactly the same way. And then we have a choice to make. If we mount it through the lower suspension arm, this will be set up for the sports car configuration, and if we mount it to the upper suspension arm, will be set up for off-road. Either way, the same rules apply, insert the bolt the whole way in, and then back off a couple of turns to make sure it moves freely. Here's an example of the two variants. On top, the sports mounting to the lower wishbone, and on the bottom, the off-road mounting to the upper wishbone. Obviously, when you're building yours, you'll want your front and back to match. Next up, we're going to assemble the chassis by introducing the base plate. You'll see that we have vertical rails running the whole way down, so we put the suspension mounting onto that and then slide it into position until the holes on the underside align. Insert two M3 bolts per end, again cutting their own thread, and the only thing you really need to check is that the bolts for the suspension are facing outwards so you can access them easily later on. Once again, here's the two variations side by side, sports on the left and off-road on the right. Next up, wheels and tyres, and the wheels are the same for either design, but obviously the tyres differ. There's two beads on each of the tyre designs, and to assemble either version, we simply need to massage the rim inside the TPU tyre, which should have just enough flex to slip over the edge of the rim and into position. Once you have the first bead seated, keep pushing until the second one seats as well it will most likely satisfyingly snap into the proper position. Here we can see four sports tires and four off-road tires prepared and ready to go. The rims now simply snap into place on the end of the hubs, and for the sports tire, the flat surface of the rim needs to face outwards. You can repeat this step until all four tires are in place, paying attention to the direction of the tread to make them all match. 
The off-road tyres snap on in the same way, except the flat side of the rim will face inwards towards the chassis, giving us a wider track width. If you need to remove a rim, simply squeeze the two hub halves together and it should pop right off. Now's a good time to check that the suspension is moving as it should be and that the vehicle rolls freely. Again, here's the two variations side by side, with the only differing parts being the printed tyres. The lower body panels are the only other parts that differ for the sports and off-road variation. In either case, they mount to the base plate with two M3 bolts per section. We simply line up the holes and insert two bolts from underneath for the side panels, which are symmetrical, and the front and back pieces bolt on from the front and back, again with two bolts each. And here's what the sports variant should look like before you proceed with the next step. The off-ride version works the same way, with a front, a rear and two symmetrical sides. Two bolts from underneath for each side piece, and that's using the outer holes, because the inner holes will be used in the final step, and two bolts each for the front and back. Once more, here's the two variants side by side, ready for the final piece. The roof is printed in front and rear pieces, and six M3 bolts are used to join them together on the underside. I tried to design the split where it would be on a real car to make this junction more forgiving. You'll notice that there's ribs running the entire length of the roof and they will line up with the mounting points in the chassis. And the roof piece simply slots down from above for either of the versions. For the sports car, it will sit very tightly over the top of the tyres, whereas the off-road buggy version gives it a lot more clearance for the suspension to move without collision. Whichever version you're building, the next part is exactly the same. The last four bolts go through the holes in the bottom of the base plate and cut their threads into the roof pieces, holding everything in place. And that completes our assembly, with our sports variant and our off-road variant largely utilising the same base parts. As for the final design, I'm mostly happy with it. Designing and modelling vehicle bodies is quite tough. This shape is pretty simple, but it does look like it should. And in off-road version, it kind of looks like a monster truck version of a Lancia Stratos. What I'd really like is for people to download my design and remix it, particularly by creating new bodies to go on top of the chassis. And that is my design for the toy car contest. To submit it, after you've uploaded everything to printables, you'll notice a button labeled compete. Click on this, tick the box, and that's it, you're in. If you are learning CAD, it's not really about winning prizes, but rather advancing your skills by taking on new challenges. Let me know in the comments if you're going to throw your hat into the ring, or even if you have some feedback on my toy car design. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy improving your 3D design skills. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.